Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with Valley PBS. Today we are chatting with Michelle Morrow, Executive Director of Tulare First Five, Lamar Henderson, Program Coordinator of All Dads Matter, and Natalie Carrera, Vice President of Educational Services at Valley PBS. They have generously agreed to share some of their experience with us. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So it is just wonderful to be able to talk about children. Children are our future. Let's talk about each of your organizations and what you do, and let's, let's start off with you, Michelle, and, and just sort of set the stage, and then let's have a discussion about the needs of children from the child on out and the needs of family from the families on out and how you each address those needs. But let's talk first about First Five in Tulare County. First Five in Tulare County is a funding organization. We offer competitive um, grants. We fund programs that serve children from the prenatal stage through their fifth birthday, hence First Five. We have 18 direct service programs that just started July 1. They are multi-year contracts, so they are funded from July 2018 through June 30, 2021. They range in a variety of services from family resource centers, um, preschool classrooms, breastfeeding programs, um, early mental health programs. We have a strategic plan. We do a strategic planning process where we go out to the community and um, have focus groups to determine what the needs are in those various communities in Tulare County. And then when we release funding, those communities um, ideally collaborate and um, will submit a, a proposal to meet whatever those determined needs are. And then you root funding accordingly. Correct. And, and Lamar, you take a different cut at the problem of, of how do you ensure that communities are healthy, children are healthy, yes. and that and a cohesive. First of all, I love the name of your organization, All Dads Matter. Well, All Dads Matter is a Merced County Human Services Agency program. We offer encouragement, support, and education on the importance of a healthy, involved, and competent father to our children and families. And we accomplish that by offering different services that meets a father's needs at that child's different developmental stages. So for guys who are expecting new babies or who are gonna be first time fathers, we offer a workshop called Boot Camp for New Dads. It's a one day, three hour workshop for first time or expectant fathers. We bring guys in who are expecting new babies in the next 90 days or so. We bring them in with veteran dads, and a veteran dad is a father that has gone through the program that has a baby zero to six months. They bring the baby to the workshop. The only people allowed in the workshops are dads and babies. <laughs> and during that time, we discuss a variety of different topics relating to caring for the new baby, supporting mom and her role as being a new mom, and then our own roles as fathers. We have an All Dads Matter Resource Center, which is a one-stop where dads can come in and get support, be it with navigating a different agency or program within the community, or understanding how different agencies work. We have an All Dads Matter support groups, men's support groups that meet in English and Spanish. And then we offer a workshop called Helping Men Recover, which is a very unique effort to uh, support fathers and men to kind of understand masculinity and uh, how our ideals about masculinity may be creating barriers in our relationships with ourselves and our children and families. Um, we do a catalog of male engagement activities at every Head Start site in the county. And, uh, you know, it's just a very uh, comprehensive approach to serving fathers and families. And in many respects, you act as a guide. It's actually these men are helping themselves with help from other men who have, in turn, required help in the past. And you act as a self-help, adding resources, of course, but it's a community healing itself. Absolutely. That's truly the strength of the program. You know, we have wonderful curriculum and facilitators, but it's the peer-to-peer -peer support. It's a safe environment where men can come in and help men so that we can accomplish those goals to be the fathers that we really want to be. And Natalie, you are attached to Valley PBS, uh, a public media station, but you have a particular role. Talk about educational services at Valley PBS. Of course. Um, so as the VP of Education Services here at the station, most of my work um, is directly related to being out in the community serving families. And so when people think of Valley PBS, they think of PBS Kids programs and the programs that they grew up watching. But we actually take the resources from the shows and the additional resources that come along with them, like 
the educational apps and games and uh, parent website resources and we accentuate that and build upon that. Um, what we offer is actually a parent engagement program. We go out into the community. We're at over 100 elementary schools in the valley and that number increases each school year. And we are actually teaching classes to families. Our Ready to Learn program um, provides classes to help parents really know how to step into the role of being their child's first teacher. What we found is that there are a number of programs in the valley that help parents with their own skills. For example, um, maybe they want to obtain their GED or learn English or um, find some new skills for the workforce, but there wasn't really anything out there that was helping parents to understand how to really help their child with their schoolwork right now. And also social emotional skills. If, if you as a parent didn't have an example in your life, teaching these skills and teaching resilience and flexibility and how to be a friend and what to do about a bully and how to take care of your body and be healthy and eat good foods for you. Those things without an example are really, really hard for parents to approach with their own children. So we actually offer 30 different classes ranging topics from um, how to help your children with reading comprehension and building a vocabulary or how to tell time or memorize math facts, all the way to positive discipline techniques, how to help your kids understand what they need to be doing without yelling at them or saying, because I said so, and breaking those cycles. So our classes are offered at elementary schools all over, and um, the schools actually bring us out to the community um, as a provider. And we're, we're serving about 16,000 individuals each school year right now. Um, very few people know about the program because it's not on our air, it's, it's out in the community and those who participate know about it. But we're, we're trying to spread the word more that that's available. How do you ensure in each of your different areas that you can take advantage of the resources that are supplied out there whether it's through First Five and, and their funding sources through the educational program, uh, Lamar, how do you how do you ensure that that your fathers are looking not only at the programs that you provide, but mm -hmm. just are aware of all the resources that are out there? You know, many times um, that kind of comes about organically. Um, I think particularly into our men support group, when a father may be having a particular issue. I'm thinking specifically right now in regards to a father. Um, who has a daughter who is autistic, and he's really struggling with making that emotional connection with her. And, but there's other men in the group who may have had children that struggle with the same uh, issues. And so they're able to say, hey, well, you know what, Merced has the Family Challenge Resource Center, and they have support groups of families. And the beauty of it is that we create a safe space where men have the opportunity to truly share openly and transparently how they feel about these issues. And when they, can, when they feel safe to open up in that, in that way, then they're able to receive that support from the other men in the group. So not only does that come organically from the men in the group, but also uh, we have wonderful collaborations throughout our county, and we do what we consider a gentle handoff. If we wanna connect a father with another organization or an agency, we can call someone specifically, a person by name, and have that person meet our dad and, and connect, or we'll put them in a car and take them over there, you know, to ensure that they make that connection. So it's about building trust equity within that community and ensuring that uh, when that parent uh, needs to connect with that resource, that they will be handled with dignity and respect and that it'll be a safe engagement. So often there are issues, discrete issues, that need to be addressed that it's just very difficult to, to get across how important they are. Uh, do you have an example of, of such an issue and how you have addressed um, those issues with fathers, um, informing them about how to deal with the most difficult times in their lives when it comes to child rearing? Absolutely. Uh, one of the components of the Boot Camp for New Dad workshop, we spend quite a bit of time specifically talking about the stressors of being a first-time dad, specifically around shaken baby syndrome. Um, it, is our, it is our goal to completely eradicate shaken baby syndrome. So this would be a situation where the stress is so much, the emotions so pent up, it can't find any expression, and then all of a sudden you have a tragedy that might occur that is over in a heartbeat but can have repercussions for the child forever. Absolutely. Recently we partnered with Valley PBS to launch a shaken baby prevention program titled Stop, Lay, Walk Away. And it's a series of commercials 
and print and some website ads where we show examples of what can happen and how a father can be very stressed out when their baby is crying, you know, and um, the importance of stopping, lay your baby down, and then walk away. You know, take some deep breath, recompose yourself, and then come back and try it again. Michelle, how do you, how do you ensure that First Five of Tulare County is aware of the needs of fathers, for example, of mothers, of grandparents who are raising children, which, which also happens, of, of second families where you have um, uh, hybrid families where the, uh, the mother and the father are not necessarily biologically associated with the children, but you're trying to teach skills and there's goodwill and, and an attempt to really learn. How do you go about ensuring that those needs are also considered and not just um, providing funding year after year to the same organizations, but you're shifting as your needs occur? We meet with all of our providers. We call our, our contractors providers. Mm -hmm. um, we meet with them quarterly and we listen to them. So they tell us, they share with us um, the things that they're learning from the families that they're working with so that we can work with the providers to adjust their scopes of work. Um, we also bring into those meetings um, educational topics. We bring speakers from throughout, not just Tulare County, but from throughout the state to share other resources that may be available to our providers so that the families that they're working with are always receiving um, all of the services that they may be eligible to, to receive. So if I'm a provider and you're funding me, I'm gonna tell you what, what I need to tell you in order to get your funding. How do you know that I as a provider am connecting appropriately with the kids and the dads and so on and so forth if, if, if most of your information is coming only from me as a provider, how do you know? How do you know that that, that that is actually reflective of your community's requirements? That's a really good question. Um, as part of our evaluation component, we do site visits. We go out on home visits with the provider staff into the home. We see the families. We listen to um, how they're engaging with the families. My, my staff, my case, our um, program officers ask questions of the client to find out are their needs being met? Is there something else that, that they need that the provider's not able to provide them with? And then we come back to the office. My staff and I meet weekly and we talk about um, their experiences out in the community and different ways that we can help our providers help their clients. Let's um, talk about how you ensure that you have what you need to provide the benefit that you wish to provide to the community? Mm -hmm. um, well, a lot of our funding comes directly from the school districts that we partner with. Um, they have a requirement to provide parent engagement, um, whether it's part of their early learning or um, their after school program funding structures or Title I. Um, it's often a, a role within the schools that can be difficult for the school staff to take on themselves in addition to the multitude of things that they're handling as it is. And so one of the things that we've done, um, I come from a background working with schools um, prior to being here at the station, and um, I learned a lot of what the schools needed in an ideal parent engagement program. So when, when I came to the station here six years ago, I was able to build a program that really met the needs of not just the families and the children, but also the schools that would allow this program to be efficient and affordable within the budgets and also provide the parents with as much as possible. We really want to eliminate the barriers to participation for our families because you can provide the greatest program in the world for parents, but if they can't get to it or they don't have childcare or it's too inconvenient for them or not in their language, it doesn't do any good. And that's so interesting because you're actually triangulating, you're an active utilizer mm -hmm. of programs that are provided by national PBS programs that you might develop here. You're basically taking those programs and shaping them according to school needs. They have certain requirements. 
And then there's this next piece, which is you've done the analysis, mm -hmm. you have the material, mm -hmm. how do you get it deployed? And how do you make sure that there are sufficient resources mm -hmm. to get that deployed? Do you work with other partners? No, I have actually an amazing team of folks who, who run this program uh, here at the station. We have 32 folks that 32 go out people. into the community. They're bilingual. Are they volunteers? Um, no, they are not. They're part of our team. They're part time. Okay. Um, and they're extremely dedicated to the work that we do. Um, we are very, very, very picky in our hiring process. Mm -hmm. We believe that if you hire well and hire for the passion for the work that we do, you can't teach that passion. And you how many schools do they yeah. cover? Uh, well, we're, we're at over 100 elementary schools, and each of those schools um, were there for between 4 and 12 weeks, once a week in the evenings or the morning. And how many children experience the benefit of those, of, oh, of those programs? Gosh, we, we're serving about 4,000 families, 16,000 individuals per year, um, about 10,000 children. That's 12, amazing. 12,000. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And you also have a similar problem, right? You have resources, you have dads. You have transportation logistics. You have people having to take time off from work. You, you're not all in one location. Right. Um, so how do you triangulate between the need out there, which is even larger than, than you can supply, mm -hmm. um, and, and your scarce resources and, your, and your, the scarce number of people who can actually provide these kinds of services? Absolutely. So we, do a, a, we, we make a, a, a deliberate effort to try to provide our services in time slots where our fathers might be able to participate. For example, our support groups are held in the evenings. Now, we've worked directly with the bus system so that we have um, buses that, that pass right by our office, you know, in time slots that would be conducive to them attending the men's group. Our boot camp workshops are held at, on the weekends. So Saturday mornings from 9 to 12 is a great place. And then we go out into the community. Instead of waiting for the, serp, the dads to come to us, we'll go to them which is, a, which is a, a great partnership with Head Start. So we can go to the different areas of our rural community where the fathers are. We offer in a variety of languages, just like you shared, in English and Spanish. And um, you know, we're very fortunate to reside in a community where fatherhood is a priority. And it's a priority from um, our community members and our residents, through our board of supervisors, to the director of the human services agencies, and a variety of the department heads within our, within our county are very supportive of the fatherhood effort. And I think one of the things that I'm really pleased about is that you know we're not a nonprofit. We fall under the Human Services Agency, under employment and training, under family stabilization. And so when it comes to funding, you know, um, our budgets are always approved. And I can say that one of the reasons for that is that um, early along in, a, in our 13-year career, one of the, uh, the dads who attended our boot camp was actually the son of the chair of the Board of Supervisors. And so he attended the boot camp workshop and he had such an amazing experience that he went back and shared it with his father. And so that uh, created a personal experience, you know, for our, local, for our elected officials and our community. So we, could, we get pretty good support uh, throughout our community. So that helps us to, uh, to, to close that gap. Well, it also talks to why we're here. We need to make sure that people are aware of these various services. and and with that awareness can come support because who, who even in the hardest of their hearts would not want to ensure that a child has a good start? Right. In terms of the work that you do, Michelle, you're a natural connector because you're constantly evaluating and then funding and evaluating and funding uh, organizations. Talk about an instance where and it, and it could be small or large, where you were just so satisfied with the difference that the contribution that you made, you're not a direct service provider, so you're basically trying to figure out how to make a bet on an organization that will provide direct services. Talk about the difference, your favorite anecdote of the difference that you made through your work. There are many. Um... But the one that comes to mind is our breastfeeding program. We had very, very low breastfeeding rates for many years. So we began funding the breastfeeding program in Sierra View, and they went from a 27% exclusive breastfeeding rate in a two year period to 62% exclusive breastfeeding in two rate. Years. Two years. Wow. 
Yes. That's 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 just amazing. That is just amazing. It is, yeah. And that was just about diagnosing a problem, seeing the evidence that there was a problem. Right. Diagnosing the problem, making a bet, paying attention to that bet until it paid, turned off. So your return on investment is actually that almost 40% of the children were able to benefit from breastfeeding, which gave them a better start. Correct, yes. And all of the nurses in the mother-baby unit were trained on the importance of breastfeeding. And so when the um, breastfeeding lactation consultants aren't there, the nurses can step in and work with the moms, the new moms, and assist them with the breastfeeding techniques and babies are healthier because of it. And Lamar, from moms yes. to dads, what is your favorite story over the years? Wow, you know, um, I've been blessed to see tremendous, you know, numbers of, of outstanding stories. Um, probably most recently was, uh, I was at a baby shower last Saturday. My wife and I went to a baby shower for one of my colleagues, and there was probably 15 of, a couple, of, of us couples there. And um, we were doing some of the games outside, and uh, um, I'm looking around, I'm like, man, I'm seeing a lot of boot camp dads out here. And so one of the moms says, how many dads out here have attended the boot camp for new dad workshop? And out of the 15 of us that was there, like seven of them raised their hands. And uh, so um, just to know that, that, that um, we have built that trust equity and that um, in the 13 years that we've been offering this program, we have babies that we've seen from newborns to now 12 years old now. You know, and you feel you do become part of their family, you know, and I think that I would agree with my uh, my colleagues at the table. It's the passion, you know, it's the passion of the work. And I think it's that knowing that um, I'm in a very unique space where at this place, at this point in my life, that um, I'm able to do purpose driven work, you know, and that it really has a tremendous effect on families and specifically children when they have a loving involved and a father who consents to that intimate relationship with her child. Natalie, what is your favorite story about the impact that Valley PBS has had on education? Um, there's one family in particular that I always think to. Um, a few years ago, we were running a program at uh, one of the elementary schools in Fresno Unified, and the classes went as scheduled and went well and smoothly, and we had a packed house each week. And um, each year, Fresno Unified will have a graduation ceremony for the parents who complete all of their courses. And we went to the graduation ceremony and we brought our friend Clifford, the big red dog, with us to visit the kids and, and take pictures and such. And I noticed one particular family would get in line quietly and wait their turn and take a picture with Clifford and the little girl would hug Clifford like he was her best friend. And then she'd get back at the end of the line and do it again uh, <laughs> several times. And I'm thinking, boy, she really likes Clifford. And after the ceremony was over, the mom approached me and she was speaking in Spanish and, and I was um, limping along with my Spanish. And um, what she explained to me was that they had attended our program the prior year and we gave them a Clifford book as part of our workshop curriculum and she had read it with her daughter every night and that her daughter was nonverbal for that whole prior year. She was three and hadn't spoken. And the very first words her daughter finally said a year later was, the book. She had memorized the book and started reading the book to her mother, and that was her favorite book. And seeing Clifford was the biggest deal, and that mom has attended every class we've offered anywhere near her, and that family has progressed. The daughter has gotten into services for speech. She's doing extremely well. The son's doing well. The father's got a better job because he wanted to pursue his education further. It's just so amazing to see a family you know, get plugged into resources and then be lifted up. Um, our, our team at that school took a special interest in making sure that that family was connected to the next step of resources as well. But I still see them frequently. They've friended me on Facebook and several of our staff. And every time I see them, it reminds me why we do the work we do. Thank you so much for sharing all the work that you've done. Uh, Natalie Carrera, Vice President of Educational Services at Valley PBS. Uh, Lamar Henderson, the Program Coordinator of All Dads Matter, and Michelle Morrow, Executive Director of Tulare First Five. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us, for sharing your stories with us, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you. Thanks for having, having us. us.